everlasting arms Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus Safe and secure from all alarms Leaning on Jesus, leaning on Jesus Leaning on the everlasting arms Amen You may be seated Thanks for your participation. Now, I could hear you singing, and that was good for a small number to hear, hear those singing out, and thankful for Betty willing to play and uh, go right along with everything. So, all right, Brother Tom. All right, good evening again. Take your Bibles and turn to the book of Habakkuk. No, I'm kidding. I just wanted to say Habakkuk. So. We're going to be in the book of 1 Corinthians tonight, chapter 1. And we're going to begin reading in verse 18. And the subject tonight is one that some people are going to be a little offended by. Because the title of the message tonight is, What Kind of Fool Am I? And I want you to ask yourself that question. What kind of fool are you? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. <clears throat> it says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified under the Jews a stumbling block, and under the Greeks, foolishness. But under them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your, for you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God hath chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring not things that are. That no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. That, according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Heavenly Fathers, we look into your word tonight. I pray you'll speak to our hearts. We thank you for the fact that you saved us. We thank you for the fact that you love us. We thank you for the fact that one day we will be with you throughout eternity. And Lord, we know that there are some that look at this and they say, that's ridiculous, it's foolish. But I pray that those who may be hearing this, whether it be over the internet or others that will hear it or be somewhere out there and hear it through messages around, I pray that you'll speak to their hearts. And I pray you'll bless our time in Christ's name. Amen. Now there's a few things that most of us can agree on and one of those things is that nobody likes to be called a fool you look at the word fool and when somebody were to call you a fool you'd be offended by it wouldn't you most of us are and the reason why is because when we think about a fool we picture a fool there's one of two things that come to mind one is a silly goofy buffoon type of person like a court jester we think about, oh, that's just ridiculous and silly. That's a fool. But then we have the other idea of a fool, and we see it, start to look at that, 
And we somehow associate that with intelligence. When somebody's called a fool, it makes them seem like they're not very bright. They're not very smart. Fools are easily manipulated, aren't they? And nobody, nobody wants to be thought of as being unintelligent. Matter of fact, when I start talking about a fool, if I were to tell you, like again, we're talking about fools tonight, some of you probably already maybe said, hey, wait a minute. I may not be the brightest bulb around, but I'm nobody's fool. And no one likes to be fooled. No one likes to be made a fool of. We don't want to look foolish, do we? That's one of the things we get very, I don't know, protective about our image. We don't like to look foolish. And so we don't do a lot of things. Now, some people don't really care what you think. But most of us, for some reason, we get very, very protective. I can remember the first time, for example, that this was years ago. The pastor called on me to pray here in the church. I was sitting back there, about three or four rows back on this side. It was the end of the service, and he always calls on somebody in the end of the service to pray. And he said, Tom Green, close us out in prayer. And immediately I was like panic stricken because I didn't want to look foolish to people in the church. And so I prayed. And the first thing when I got done, when I asked my wife, Luna, I said, Did I sound stupid? Did I sound dumb? See, I didn't have one of these eloquent prayers like a lot of these people, oh, Heavenly Father, Thou art so, you know, you know how they do, or how we do. A lot of times in church, we pray to impress people. I just prayed to God and said, Lord, thank you for allowing, you know, it's a simple prayer. But I was afraid I would look foolish. And a lot of times, people will not pray in the church because they don't want to appear foolish. We don't like to be made fool of when we go out in public. The idea of being a fool bothers us. But I got to tell you, whether you like it or not, we all are foolish sometimes. See, when you start really looking at that word fool, it's not about an intelligence level. You could be the smartest person around. You could have college degrees, PhDs. You could have all of these things and still be a fool. Because what we talk about fool, it has nothing to do with your intelligence. It has nothing to do with your level of knowledge, but it has to do with wisdom, or a lack thereof. See, a fool is someone who lacks wisdom, or has wisdom, but ignores it, and therefore makes bad choices. That's foolishness. When you know something that not right or you shouldn't do it and you do it anyway that's foolish and if we're all honest here I think every single one of us could say at some point in your life you've done something foolish I'd be the first to say yes I have I definitely have done things that are foolish I've done many things that were foolish but I'll give you a little example I was in the Navy I was an electrician and when I got out of the Navy, I started working in the nuclear power training unit up on the weapons station up in Goose Creek. And one of my jobs there was do electrical and mechanical maintenance. And we had um, a thing that was called a containment. It was on a valve that was out, outside on one of the submarines, but this containment was made of plastic. And so to keep it pliable when it would get cold outside so it wouldn't be brittle and crack, they put a space heater out there with it to keep it warm, keep it flexible. And one of the jobs of the other technicians was to go and check every night this containment and to check the heater make sure it was working so that this containment would not be in danger of getting cracked because it was brittle. And the guy's name was Dave. One night, Dave and I were working, and I was walking down the pier, and he comes running me, Tom, you come, Tom, you, you got to come over here. Why? He said, the heater shocked me. What? He said, the heater shocked me. You got to go check it out. Okay. So I walk over and I look at the heater. It looks okay to me. It's running. Heat's coming out of it. So what do I do? He said, I got shocked. I touch it. Sure enough, I got shocked. 
Now I know what you're thinking. That was foolish. No, that was dumb. That was just stupid, okay? But when I checked it again to make sure I really got shocked, and I did, that was foolish. So I knew better. I knew it shocked me the first time, but I just wanted to make sure that was being foolish. That was unwise. And all of us have done things that are foolish. But none of us likes to admit that we can be a fool. Well, you know, the Bible has a lot to say about fools. It has a lot to say about foolishness. And there are really two categories, major categories, all types of fools, but there's two major categories of fools. And whether you like it or you don't like it, every single person fits into one of these two categories. Number one, you're either a fool for the world, or number two, you're a fool for God. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, if you're a fool for God, the world looks at you as a fool. If you're a fool for the world, God looks at you as a fool. You're either one or the other. You can't escape it. So that's the question I'm asking myself tonight. That's the question I want you to ask yourself. What kind of fool are you? Now we're going to look at the very first one tonight, and that's being a fool for God. Or from the world's point of view, what a fool is. And then next week, we will look at the second part, and that's being a fool in God's eyes. But tonight, we begin, and we look at what the world considers a fool. You realize that every single person sitting in this building tonight that has accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, the world says, you're a fool. You realize that, right? The fact that you were here this morning, I know most of you were here this morning, you got up, maybe you were here for Sunday school. You got up out of a nice warm bed, you got out, and you came down here, and you went to Sunday school. Oh sure, they offered coffee and donuts, I get that. But then you came, and then you stayed for a morning service. And then you come back again tonight. Now, I know there's a lot of people that aren't here tonight, but you came back tonight, and the world says, that's foolish. You're a fool. You know what? You have better things that you could be doing with your time than to sit in some church and listen to some foolish person get up here and spout out these foolish words. There's better things that you could do. You could be at home watching the basketball games. You could be at home watching the race. You could be out shopping. You could do all these things that would be more pleasurable to you. But yet you chose to be in church. The fact that you give money to the church, you tithe, they say that's foolish. Why would you do that? Especially in this kind of economy. Bills are going up. The prices of everything, and yet you still give money to the church. You've got better things to spend your money on. Look at the things you could have if you didn't give that money to the church. The fact that you believe in a God that you cannot see, an invisible God that you can't even prove exists, it's foolish, right? That's what the world says. That's the way they look at you. That's the way they look at me. And they say, why would you go and support an organization like a church that hates women? Now, the church doesn't hate women. But they look at us and the idea is, and they say, they put women down. Why? Because we believe that women shouldn't preach. Or we believe that men should have a role in this or that. Well, that's not what we say. That's what the Word of God says. It's right here. They say, but you put your belief in that. That's wrong. It's foolish. They think it's foolish because we don't support gender identity. That we don't support same-sex marriages. We don't support worldly things. These things are for the betterment of society. And yet you want to go and support an organization or a group of people that put it down. We don't support women's choice. 
It was funny. There was a song that came back out. And remember the Equal Rights Movement came back out in the early 70s. They were trying to get that passed. And there was a song that became an anthem. It was by Helen Reddy. It said, I am woman, hear me roar. You know. And I was watching something. That they, she was singing this song. You'd have been back there. I am woman, hear me roar. Crazy stuff, right? Nothing wrong with that, ladies. I'm not trying to put you down whatsoever. But there's one line in that song that said, I am an embryo. I still have the ways to grow. Well, here's the thing. If you were an embryo in this day and age, they would say it's their, their right to kill you. That's not women's rights. That's crazy stuff. But they call us foolish. You get the idea. If we don't agree with their philosophy, the worldly wisdom, then we are foolish. That's what they say Christians are. We don't support things that encroach on the personal freedoms of other people. Sexual choices, gender choices, whatever it might be. They say we're not only crazy, we're fools. And isn't it interesting that they say that these rights that they have are God-given rights to choose and that type of thing, but they don't believe in God. That's foolish. But here we are, and they call us the fools. And they say, okay, why are Christians fools? Well, I'll give you some reasons. First of all, they believe that we're foolish to believe in this book, the Bible. To believe in the gospel. We can claim that the Bible is the inerrant, in, inerrant, infallible word of God. And they say that's foolish right there because it was written by man. If it was written by man and man is flawed, there is no way that this book cannot be flawed. They seem to forget that this was inspired by God. God gave men the words to put down. But they want to disregard that and they say, no, no. It's not true. It's false. It's a bunch of lies. And I've even heard them say something like, okay, you can take your Bible, but we're going to treat it like a fairy tale, like all these other books. See, that's what they look at it. And they say, you believe in fairy tales. Now, these are the same people that believe in Santa Claus, the tooth fairy, and the, the, the Easter bunny, and all those things. And they promote those things, but they refuse to believe in the word of God. And they think because we do, we're foolish. They look at things in the gospel, and they say the gospel is absolutely foolish. Because, first of all, it talks about a God who sends his son to come to this earth to walk as a man. Born of a virgin. Who lived a life. Of sinless perfection. Who died on the cross for the payment of your sins and for mine. Was buried and rose again on the third day. So that we might have eternal life. And the world says that's foolish to believe. How can one be born of a virgin? It's impossible. Can't happen. How can anyone be perfect? We all flawed. We all make mistakes. We're human. But then they say, how can anyone pay the price for our sins? How can they do that? First of all, they don't think they're really sinners. They don't think what they're doing is bad. So they say there's no reason for someone to die for our sins. And they look at us and they say, we, we put our faith in the fact that Jesus died for our sins. He was buried and he rose again and said, once you're dead, you're dead. There's nothing more. You can't come back. But yet he did. And we say, you put your faith in that? It's, failing. it's foolish. I love the song you sang, brother. Leaning on the everlasting arm. But you know what they say? That song is foolish that you would lean on a God who died on a cross. If he was God, he can't die, right? He's still there. But you believe in a God that died. You believe in a God that was here in poverty. You believe a God that was ridiculed was born out of wedlock. Those type of things. 
They say it's foolish. That's what the world wants to say about us. But the Bible says in verse 18 here, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. There's a differentiation right there. It says for those that are perishing, those that are dying, those that reject the word of God, they're the ones who say it's foolish. But for those who put our faith in the word of God, it's power. So they think we're fools for believing in the word of God. They think we're fools for believing the gospel. But secondly, they believe that we're fools because we listen to preaching. And not just any preaching, true preaching. Those that profess the wisdom of the world look at preaching as foolishness. Our text tells us here in verse 20, it says, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. God said, I'm going to put a man up here to preach, to teach, and share the gospel. I'm going to send him abroad to share the gospel so that people can believe and that they can have eternal life. The world looks at me and what I'm saying is a waste of time, a bunch of hoo-ha, foolishness, malarkey. They look at preachers and preaching as nothing more than some kind of scam. See, the world looks at preachers they say, they're not interested in you. The only thing they're interested in is your money. Because unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there that have taken advantage of the ministry. You have these health, wealth, and prosperity preachers that are lining their pockets with money. And they, can't care, they could care less about your eternal welfare. They don't. They just want to get rich. And we've seen other people that are out there preaching. We've heard the scandals that have taken place of preachers that are only in it for what they can get. And one of the things that's so hard for people when they come into the church, they look at the church as being greedy and wanting nothing more than your money. And I've shared with you before, my father-in-law, I'm trying to get him into the church and ask him to come to church, ask him to come to church, and he said, oh, the church just wants your money. He's one of those. The church just wants your money. That's all you're after. I got him to the church one time. One time. We're sitting right back there. And the message was on tithing. And he said, see, I told you. That's all they want, your money. See, God doesn't need your money. He doesn't. But God's commanded us to give. Why? To keep the lights on. To keep the ministry going. To get it across the world through our missionaries. But the world says it's foolish to do that. Because the message is foolish. And preachers are foolish. And so... We sitting, you sitting here, me sitting, being here, listening to preaching, following the preaching. They look at that as just a waste of time. It's crazy. But you know what the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 14 and 15. It says, how then shall they call on him and who they have not believed? How are you going to call on somebody that you don't believe in? And it goes on and says, how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? How can you believe in God and call on God if you don't know who God is? You've never heard of God. And there we go. That's why we have preachers. He says, and how shall they hear without a preacher? We're here to get the message out. As how shall they preach except they be sent? Now understand this. You can get up and you can preach, but if God didn't call you, it is foolish. Okay? To be up here 
You need to be called. In order to present the right message and the wisdom of God, you have to be called by God. I'm not, I don't want just anybody delivering a message for me. If I have a message I want to give to Lou, I might tell Monica, because I believe Monica will give him the message. But I'm not going to get somebody off the street to go and tell them. Because you know what? Who knows what they're going to tell them? We had somebody came in here one time that was candidating or wanting to be a candidate for the pastor to the church. And I asked him about his calling. I said, who called you? Did, when, did, when did the Lord call you to preach? The Lord never called him to preach. An admiral in the Navy called him to preach. Uh, disqualified, sorry. We want a man of God, not a man of the Navy. The CNO, I don't care what he thinks, all right? That's important. Say, how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? And as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. See, the world is full of false preachers. There's full of false preaching. And what I mean by that is not just people that get up in a pulpit somewhere. You have a lot of people out there preaching a lot of worldly things that they take as a religion. Climate change and you name it. World things. These topics that they are. They're preaching and preaching and preaching. Equity and whatever. All of those things go against the word of God. But they become a religion for them. And they promote their thing. And they say anything else is foolish. If you don't agree with us, you're foolish. So they think we're foolish for listening or believing in the Bible. They think we're foolish for listening to true preaching. But they think we're also foolish because we reject the world's wisdom. We reject the view of so-called experts. They... Believers, true believers, refuse to accept as fact those things that the world tell us are fact. You say, well, what are you talking about? Okay, you look at something like climate change. The world says climate change is an absolute fact. They say that evolution is an absolute fact. They say women's choice is an absolute fact. They say that all of these things, the Big Bang Theory is a fact. Again, theory of evolution, the Big Bang Theory, the key word of those are theories. They're theories because they can't prove them. If they weren't theories, they'd be able to prove them. But they look at us and say, well, you believe in, in, in God and all this. I believe in creation. That God created things. They say, that's absolutely foolish that there's some higher power up there who just spoke things into creation. That he took a pile of dirt and he breathed into it and somehow man arrived. They think that's foolish. They say, you can't prove that. I can't prove it, no. Other than what the word of God says. But they can't prove their theories either. But here's the thing. They want me to believe that there was absolutely nothing. I mean, nothing. Not even a speck of dust. And somehow, it blew up. It blew up. How could it blow up? There was nothing. But yet it did. It blew up. And somehow, from that, this universe, this world was created. And the earth was formed. And this big ball was on just the right axis to go around the sun... So it spins around at just the right speed so things don't fly off of it. And it's at the right distance from the sun, the right angle so people don't burn up or they don't freeze. And then somehow during all of that, then a little bit of dust came down and it got in the water. And the water, it had a little amoeba in it. And this little amoeba grew legs and became a tadpole. And the tadpole got legs and it came on the land and it went from being a tadpole to a monkey. It went from being a fish to a mammal, a monkey. How is that possible? I don't know, but that's the theory. And then the monkey becomes us. 
But somehow, some way, it stopped right there. Evolution just stopped after we became humans and from being a monkey. Now, they want me to believe that, but they cannot believe that a God created anything. And they call me foolish. See, we reject these so-called experts. And you know what they do? They bring them out here, and they put them in their lab coats. And they start talking about all the degrees they've had at all these colleges. Look, I don't care how many, if you wear a lab coat, I don't care how many college degrees you have, I don't care how many PhDs you have, I don't care if you stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. It's not fact. It's not fact. I'm not going to believe it. You know how many experts, think back, just two years ago, all these experts were coming out with this COVID hit, and they're saying, you got to wear a mask, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. Well, what are we finding out now? The masks were ineffective. People staying at home was ineffective. All it did was wreck the economy. The vaccine that was going to keep you from getting COVID doesn't work. People are getting it. I know people have had the shots. You know, I had the shot. I had the, the second shot. I still got COVID. I know other people that have. I know people that had COVID multiple times and they've had shots and boosters and all that. I still know people that wear the mask. Look, I'm not attacking anybody. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. Some of you might need to wear a mask. I don't know. Some people tell me I need to wear a mask sometimes, you know. That's okay. If it makes you feel more secure, fine. But they said it's fact. It's not fact. You just didn't know how to treat it. So you come up with things. But you said anybody else has said anything differently, that was foolish. And here's the thing. Did you know that you could not get COVID and these mass rallies if you were supporting the left's ideas? Couldn't do it. If it's a, BML, a BLM rally, couldn't get it there. If it was a protest or a, a riot, it's okay. You couldn't get it there. But what's the first place they said you can't go? Church. Why? Because you'll get COVID. You can't sing hymns because you'll get COVID and you'll spread COVID around and everybody in the church will die. Wow. And you know what? People bought into that. They said, we're foolish for going to church. And there's COVID out there. We're foolish if we don't come to church. We're foolish if we reject the word of God. But no. They call us foolish because we reject the experts. We call us foolish because we reject unproven facts. They call us foolish because we don't listen to their wisdom. But here's the thing. The wisdom of the world will keep you from knowing God. Look down at verse 21 again. It says, after the, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. See, it's the wisdom of the world that will keep you from God. But here's the thing. If you have the wisdom of God, it'll keep you from the world. It's just like this book. Sin will keep you away from this book, or this book will keep you away from sin. Look why? The wisdom of God's right here. That's where you're going to get it. The world wants to keep, use its wisdom to keep you from knowing God. But the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is in the beginning of is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. If you want to have wisdom, you don't want to be a fool, you want to do a right thing, it starts right here. Spending time in the Word, spending time with God, spending time in godly counsel around godly people, and rejecting the experts of the world, rejecting their unproven facts, rejecting their wisdom. And then we get to the, the last thing. The world looks at us and says we're foolish because we 
are weak and we're base. We align ourselves with things that are despised and insignificant. The world believes that you have to be powerful. The world believes that you need to be connected, significant, that you need to be famous. The more famous you are, obviously the more wisdom that you have, right? We put all our trust in celebrities. Isn't that amazing? You all know what's going on tonight, the Oscars, right? I don't know if you care. I don't care. I don't watch the Oscars. I don't want to sit there for however many hours for a bunch of celebrities start preaching to me about how dumb I am and how, how much more they know than I do. They don't know anything about the subject they're talking about. They think because they're celebrities somehow they automatically have all this wisdom. And people will listen to celebrities instead of people preaching the truth. They'll trust the politicians. And what has that get, gotten us so far? Got us in a world of hurt, right? Had a bank failure because the politician said it couldn't fail. Had this guy on TV up to last week was telling you invest in the SVB. It was a good investment. And then it went bankrupt. Closed down. The feds had to take it over. How crazy is that? This money guy on CNBC is telling you, invest, it's a good investment. Yeah, if you want to throw your money away. But see, he's on TV, so he must know what he's talking about. He's got more wisdom than you and I do. They look at us because we put our trust and faith in a man named Jesus. Well, he's not just a man, he's God. But they reject that fact. They say he was a man. If he was so great and powerful, why did he allow himself to be killed on the cross? If he's supposed to be the king of kings and the lord of lords, who could have called down 10,000 angels, why didn't he do it? They mocked him, they ridiculed him, they beat him. They see that's weak. And they look at us and they say, you people are the, you're, you're the lowest of the low because they look at us and say, we have mental problems. We need a crutch. That's why we talk about song, leaning on the everlasting arms. They say, well, religion's a crutch for you. The church is a crutch. Jesus is a crutch. They look at us being weak. They look at us being base. And the Bible says that the world hated Jesus and the world's going to hate us. See, we're despised. They think we're foolish and we're fools because we're despicable. We don't agree with them. We don't line up and, and kowtow to them. No. If you stand up for the word of God, then you're a fool. You're despised. And then they want to write us off. And say, oh, that's just a bunch of zealots. That's just a bunch of nutcases. They say, we're insignificant. We don't matter. Majority of the people want to do this or do that. I remember one time before the lottery came here to South Carolina. Remember those days we had the old electronic, um, I don't know, it wasn't pinball machine, but the poker thing, machines and all that. They started wanting to bring the lottery in. And there was a lot of protest. People were fighting to keep the lottery from coming into South Carolina. And I was at work one day, and this person I worked with, he, he got all upset. He said, why are you Christians trying to keep me from doing what I want? It's none of your business. I said, well, you know, it's, it will morally hurt families. I started giving them reasons. You see things that happen. It's like with drugs or anything else. People get addicted to it. We've seen babies left in parking lots because their parents are in there playing the video poker machines or doing all this. They're wasting money on the lottery tickets instead of feeding the family. We could go on and on and on. He goes, it's not hurting anybody. It's my choice. So, okay, fair enough. Then I asked him a question. I said, okay, let me ask you this. He said, what? Why do I have to wear a seatbelt? 
when I'm driving my car? Well, that's the law. Why? What if I don't want to wear a seatbelt? You're restricting my freedom within the car. You're putting a mandate on me that shouldn't be there. And he said, no, that's for your safety. Okay, what if I don't care if I'm safe? Well, it, it, it should be because it causes it. Everybody starts going on and says, is it any different than the lottery? No. You're telling me I have to do this, but you're telling me I shouldn't interfere with what you want to do. Now, it's the law of the land. That's what we do. But it doesn't mean I have to agree with it. The lottery got passed. I have to wear a seatbelt. There's a lot of things that I don't agree with. But they look at our opinion. They look at what we believe and they say it's insignificant. Because you know what? Most people want this. Well, it's not most people. It's a small vocal group that seem to get their way. But they look at us as being weak. They look at us being base. They look at us and despise us and say we're insignificant. And that's why the world looks at Christians and says, you are fools for God. So my question for you tonight is this. Are you a fool for God? When the world looks at you, do they see a fool? Now, that's all I have for you tonight, but the second part of this message, we're going to look at what God says a fool is. What does God say a fool is? And I hope nobody fits into that category. But I can tell you this, sometimes we end up being more like a fool for the world than we do as a fool for God. That's sad, but it's true. All right. Will you stand and we'll pray and we'll be dismissed. Be back on Wednesday night and... We'll continue looking in the Word of God. I'll be safe as you go home tonight. Let's pray. Heavenly Fathers, we come to you this night. We thank you for the fact that you have given us your Word. You have given us people in our past who've preached the Word to us so that we could know you, that we could believe upon your Son, Jesus Christ that we might have eternal life. And no matter if the world thinks we're fools or not, I would rather be a fool for you than a fool for the world. Now be with us. We go our separate ways. Be with us throughout the week. I pray that you help us to have a boldness and witness to those around us. And we just thank you for all you've done and all you're going to do. In Christ's name, amen. Y'all have a good night.